I'm David Trafford um, of uh, the Trafford Wines, um, formerly an architect, been in love with wine uh, since kind of late childhood and we live on this beautiful property so it just became a transition from doing architecture to getting more and more involved in wine and yeah that's me. So yeah I'm actually born and um, grew up in, in Durban and had the idea to move to the Cape, buy a wine farm and all those kind of romantic things. It was in 1976 at the, and then came across this property which my dad especially kind of fell in love with. He also kind of loved the challenge of, of creating something from scratch and you know we had to walk for two kilometers to get to the property. People thought that uh, my parents were mad, you know, it, this farm was Kiewied and number four. Anyway, they bought the, the property back in 1976 and we moved here in 77. So I was uh, 13 at the time. So obviously it was, was sort of very kind of eventful and sort of life changing uh, experience. Um, the main problem was that actually the farm didn't come with a quota. Um, so we weren't allowed to grow grapes. He planted rootstock for the nursery industry and it was the, at, at, at one stage we were the biggest uh, virus free certified um, plantation in the country. We supplied um, KWV at the time oh, wow. with rootstock and then started the Montfleur conference venue. So it was actually the first building that I designed. It's quite an important part, they're the, called the Montfleur scenarios. I remember even brying for the people here, there were people who were quietly released from jail. Um, Mandela wasn't here, but Chris Harney was. So we didn't really know who these people were. <laughs> yeah, my dad passed away in 91, so then you're allowed to buy. So then in 92, we could actually produce wine. Started the winery at the same time as working as an architect. Um, and we started releasing our wine in 94, uh, the same year I got married. Yeah, it was a very eventful year. It was the transition to a democracy at the same time. Property, yeah, you know, there's just such potential. I mean, these are the slopes of the Helderberg where, you know, some of the greatest red wines of South Africa are produced. And wine is very much a thing of time. So my idea was to start in a really small way and see how it goes and at least get the time, get, you know, ha have the sort of time on my side, you know. <laughs> yeah, so at the Trafford we started out with basically as a red wine cellar. I mean, pretty much modeled on a sort of Bordeaux concept. The idea was to produce one wine, um, a Cabernet-based blend. Um, but from the first vintage, instead of doing one wine, we ended up with four. You know, my aim as as a winery is to produce the wine that's that's as good as the best in the world and um, whether we achieve that or not that's for other people to judge but you know I'm pretty confident that we can make a cabinet that's as great as any cabinet in the world. It's been an exciting journey to uh, develop the vineyard at Sain. There are not as many people as, <laughs> as crazy as I am. The concept of Sain is, is much the same as the kind of Bordeaux concept of planting a whole lot of varieties. I mean, more than Bordeaux, not just five, but quite a few more. And seeing what does best. Um, not only in general, but from vintage to vintage, and then putting together the best pot possible wine from that. So the idea is really two flagship wines, a red and a white, and we simply label it red and white. The Cabernet does really well there, and um, yeah, I just didn't want to sort of die wondering what Cabernet would <laughs> be like there. So. <laughs> So we planted some Cabernet um, and we are actually using it more and more in the blend now. We also used to bottle it separately. It's just one block on one clone or one rootstock. 
yeah, I just saw like a great opportunity to do something really interesting there. So instead of just expanding the business, the idea was to keep it small and, and the way we make the wine and, and everything is very small and personal and so on. And then kind of try and recreate a similar sort of um, estate um, in a whole nother area. It's always been a huge fascination of me that other potential areas within South Africa that potentially can make great wine. It just takes quite a few decades. But I think with, with a more scientific approach and a bit more intuitive approach as well and, and, and a focused approach that one can find areas to make brilliant wine that aren't traditional areas. Um, you know, I think the most noticeable uh, proponent of that are the Hamilton Russells who went out and, and is pretty much established the Himmel and Arda region. So there are lots of pockets around the country that have potential for great wine. We went to Tides Lodge, which is on the Breda River in the Malchus area. It's very close to the Seine winery. And I was just struck by the, that whole area um, being so close to the sea and, and especially these amazing kind of rolled stone soils um, just reminded me of Chateauneuf du Pape. And I've always loved this kind of images of these vines, especially these, you know, pretty old vines kind of growing out of these round stone uh, soils. Um, and there's nothing like it in South Africa. I mean, you get the Agalus Plain is, is a kind of raised and the, the river is incised. So you have this plateau that used to be part of the river valley that's now 70 meters above the river. And that's, you know, so that's similar t in, in a way to the situation in chateauneuf de pape uh, where you have that kind of raised platter of round stones. But, you know, my objective is not to make heaps of money, you know, then I'd rather do something else. It's like, why bang your head against a brick wall? Because it's nice and you stop. <laughs> For me, it's been a great uh, pleasure and challenge to develop something there and to, to make a contribution. For me, it's far more interesting than just making more wine and selling more wine and making more money. It's to create something new, kind of allow um, Charla to, to take it on like it's her own, basically, yeah. We used to make the wine, um, we used to bring the grapes back and make the wine here. And we always wanted to to build a cellar there and really establish in a proper estate, you know. I mean, yeah, we just always had this vision of it being more of an estate and, and having the winery in the vineyard. So Sharla has taken on that role um, at, at a very young age. She joined us at 25. People are more adventurous, you know. People are looking for those more authentic experiences and, and people want to go out to the proper countryside. It's really three key areas. You've got to grow good grapes, make good wine and sell well. And, um, you know, so if any one of those three things aren't done well, it's problematic. You know, you can be the greatest winemaker in the world, but if you aren't getting good grapes, it's not going to be anything special. And the biggest part of the journey is actually selling the wine or convincing people that that this strange place you're growing grapes is good wine you know even though it's pretty obvious in the glass that it's fantastic wine. I think this whole sort of heroic viticulture thing has really been um, fascinated me more recently you know as I say famous wine regions become famous because of the access to a market that's prepared to spend a lot in their wine. And if you look at Bordeaux, it's basically the most accessible place. They're almost growing out of rocks and things like that. So I just think that's far more interesting than like Bordeaux, which is now just sort of pretty industrial. I mean, I think there's, there's struggle and struggle. You know, I think it's, you know, if you, you can train so hard that, you know, you, you break yourself. <laughs> That doesn't help. There, there does need to be significant hardship. Failure is not a bad thing if you learn from it. 
you know, um, as long as you live through it. <laughs> you know, going to Malchas is <laughs> international enough for me. <laughs> the chance I took with developing the straw wine thing was quite a high point because it's a fantastic thing for South African wine. So I think we are quite blessed in this country with that collegiate spirit amongst producers, which I believe is quite unique. They're these amazing vineyards from unusual places making great wine. Some of those producers are, you know, they're great wines and great stories and 